something. <laughs> it's already recording. G'day guys, welcome back to another video. My name's Timon. In this video, I will be uh, ripping out the diesel engine and replacing it with an electric motor. Simple, right? I'll start off the video by just running you through all the components that I have for the electric motor setup, where I got them from as well, in, in case you wish to buy them from these suppliers. And then I'll break the whole install process down into steps. So if you wish to copy it, you can do so. Radio, this is Slider Drift. Today we learn. I've got all the components set out here. Let's just have a quick look before we get started. And first cab off the rank is the electric motor, which would normally sit here on the housing. It's about that big. It's just copper and magnets, basically, and it's um, about 25 kilos. It's away getting repaired. Okay, so this is the motor housing. So this motor housing, along with the shaft, I've got uh, two locking collars here, just because I had a spare one. I've got a bearing there and a bearing on this side and then the shaft coming through obviously and another locking collar here these bearings that i've got attached to this motor housing are not thrust bearings but um i was speaking to the manufacturer and based on 20 percent of their load capacity they should be fine and that is going to be plenty for my application so one bearing for each direction this motor housing if you can see the pulley inside there and then i'll have the next pulley up here which will come off the electric motor and then that band will be exactly like that so the electric motor will stick through that hole i went with a two to one pulley system that was just what was based on the previous engine in this boat it was about 3000 rpm max rpm and then it had a uh, gearbox of two to one which stepped it down so i've just essentially recreated all that the actual electric motor will mount onto there go through the pulley system and then this is the coupler that i've got and there's a little key here this little key will just slide into there this coupler goes on there and then connects to the shaft which goes out the back of the boat after that we have the motor controller the motor controller 48 volts comes in here so that's supplied from my batteries and then these three here this motor controller must convert it to ac i'm not sure what voltage and those three wires come out here and they connect it directly to the electric motor on the back of the motor controller i've just got an aluminium plate with some copper pipe running through it and that actually connects all to there so my electric motor is a i'll just put a picture up here of it is a mott energy me 1616 um or mont energy is it mont or mott 1616 it's water cooled and based off my motor controller and my battery size it'll be running this many kilowatts after the motor controller we've got the wiring harness the wiring harness got this plug which goes into the back of the motor controller and then all the other little bits and pieces for it is this is a contactor, so it'll use my 12 volt system with the key. Turn the key on, and that contactor will actually turn the whole system on. This goes straight into the back of the electric motor. This little one here goes to the throttle. This little wooden thing is just something that I've already built so it can install into my cockpit easy and then you got a few other little bits and pieces that will turn on like the cooling system i think that's about it that's all that i've got then after that we've just got the cooling system and this is going to be i haven't got the um tubes and the pipes for this yet but i do have the 12 volt fan the radiator the pump and the reservoir this is going to be a closed system so water going from that through the electric motor which obviously isn't there and then through the motor controller and then back to the radiator just a simple cooling system just like you'd see in any car basically closed obviously using fresh water not salt water okay where did i get all this stuff and why did i buy it from there and the dealings that i've had with the uh electric vehicle companies out there so i got my cooling system all this here and i do believe i also got this little aluminium part of the cooling system as well 
from Thunderstruck Motors in USA. I initially, when I was trying to get a motor and the motor controller and figure out which one I needed, they were really difficult. This isn't to say don't go through them. I obviously bought stuff through them, but when I was trying to get help with setting up my system, the guy that I was dealing with, and this is definitely probably not always the case. It might've been just bad luck that I got this one guy, but he was just going on about the current issue and I need to go to 96 volts. And I'm like, my system is 48 volts period i'm not going more than that and and he just wouldn't have a bar of it um and there are so many people out there doing 48 volt systems he just couldn't wrap his head around it for some reason or another regardless so that's why i didn't go through thunderstruck motors for all of my motor controller and motor setup and harness and all that kind of stuff the housing the pulleys can we see that the pulleys the belts i've got spare pulleys i've got spare belts and the coupling the stainless steel shaft with already the tiny little grooves in it for the keys and all the keys. I got all this stuff from a company called Kit Electric Shop and they're in France. They were awesome. As far as the motor housing is concerned and all that kind of stuff, I really, really, really liked that company. They were expensive, um, but they're just really good. Every single item is listed individually. And you can buy spares and I foresee in the future if I ever need anything else I can go back to that website and get that particular part <clears throat> and and every other website that I ever saw they were always just like yeah you get a kit and you get all these bits and it was just all a bit too much for my very much adolescent learning brain at that time obviously not sponsored nothing sponsored on this website <laughs> I highly recommend Kit Electric Shop because of the amount of stuff that they had, how helpful they were, and also just, yeah, just all, all their little bits and pieces are all itemized. So I found out the shaft diameter for my electric motor and also the keyway and um, was able to basically figure out all of this setup from their website, which was great. Moving on to my electric motor not present and the whole wiring harness and also my sevcon gen 4 size 4 controller so all of this stuff and the electric motor i got from a guy called tully at electric drive engineering i believe he's in wa all the links to all this stuff will be down below he is local he's in australia um and he is exceptional he was so so good at helping me decide what size i needed what how long the wires needed to be and he essentially customized it all and was just really helpful through the whole process no matter where you are in australia or in the world i highly recommend um tully from electric drive engineering he's amazing he's been so helpful and his prices are super competitive as well um, which is what you want and i do believe electric drive engineering also now makes the housings so as his range of items that he um, has and stocks grows it's more and more likely that he, he'll become the one-stop shop or, or or he might already be I'm, I'm not actually sure to find out how many kilowatts of power that i needed from my electric motor first i used online calculators converting i had a 24 horsepower diesel converting diesel to electric so essentially converting horsepower to kilowatts and i just don't think they are an accurate conversion not yet anyway because it's not apples for apples for instance an online calculator would tell me 24 horsepower diesel engine convert that to kilowatts it's saying 18 kilowatts my motor can boost for two minutes or something like that to 21 kilowatts but basically it's rated at eight and a half kilowatts for about an hour. Eight and a half kilowatts, that is a lot of power. I definitely don't think very often I'm gonna be seeing those numbers at all. So just be wary about that. It's just something to think about when you're designing your own system and trying to figure out what's perfect for your boat. So I basically had to just scour the internet 
for as many people as I could find that had done the same. What displacement boats they had, what type of boats they had, and I just had to make a best educated guess on what was the best for my boat. What I'm going to do for you guys in the not too distant future is I am going to do a lot of testing to see at what speeds my boat is going and, and how much power it's pulling and how many amps it's pulling. So you'll be able to get a rough idea of how much power I've got my boat displacement, what type of boat I've got, and at various speeds through the water, what uh, how, how much power it's actually pulling. I do need to install some BNG components so I can get that accurately, so that's got to come up first, but then after that I'll get to that and hopefully get that to you guys sooner rather than later. Alrighty, that's all the parts, where I got them from and why, and now all I've got to do is rip out the diesel engine. Easy, right? Okay, go.